Hello ladies and gentlemen, as promised, a second installment on Python explaining how PyScripter works. Here I have opened the IDE. It's made of several panels like this one here and then another where it appears we can type code. Type? Yeah, we can type code. And one small one at the bottom that says Python engine is active. Those panels, they can move actually. So for example, if I want this to be bigger, I can. And same thing with the small panels, the panel at the bottom. It's also possible to detach them or remove them. So there's a little cross here. And there's also a little pin thing so that we can pin them here, but decide to move them somewhere else. It's same with this one over there. Right, what else have we got? The bottom there is actually a Python interpreter. That is a place where I can type commands and Python replies. So if I type two plus two, I get four. If I type a command like print hello, it follows the command and I get hints. So as I started to type print, a little thing comes up that says what command starts with PRI. And there's also a bit of information about what print does. But if I do something completely different, PR, so that's with property, and pra, there isn't a pra, so I can see it's empty. So it helps with making fewer typos. This here is a program. What it means is it's a file where your commands are saved. You can save this with a name. So at the moment, this file isn't saved. When I open the IDE, this is what I get. Uh, let's press save and it will offer me to save it under a name and in a folder. So I create the folder, my document, teaching, modules, Python. And it offers me to save the file and it calls it by default, module one, okay, fair enough. No, I'm gonna call it hello, world because that's what we're going to do so i've saved my file you can see there's some stuff there and it's not very clear what uh, what it is you can also see it's rather colorful at the top there is a series of comments comments always appear in gray and they start with a hash key if i put a hash key anywhere it comes up gray This program will print hello at the console. Then those uh, words here in other colors, and uh, you might be surprised by what they mean. I'm going to give a rather incomplete explanation about what this means right now. When the program is loaded, the machine will run this thing called main. And at the moment, main says, don't do anything at all. Just let it go. I can, to run the program, I can press the green arrow, which is up here. There's also a run option in the menus. Is it in edit? No, uh, in, oh, there's run, sorry. And there's run here. So I can run the program, but actually main runs and main does nothing. So not very much happens, but just to check that nothing wrong happens either. Remote interpreter reinitialized, not much has happened. Right, let's get the machine to do something. Can I do two plus two and run? Yeah, 
why can't I see the result? I pressed run, the remote interpreter got reinitialized. I'm starting to get a little confused by all of this stuff. Um, right click on here, clear. Ah, okay. I can take out all of the older information from that interpreter space. All right, but here I put two plus two and it didn't say four. Um, at the console I can do it. 2 plus 2 but here when I do this it doesn't get printed is it good or is it bad I suppose on balance I'll call it a good thing imagine Jin in here had 10 lines that carry out various calculations for a purpose then at the console I'd get 10 results of the calculations I'm doing but maybe I only want the final thing to be printed on at the console to to be read by the by the person who runs my software so the calculation probably works the result isn't uh, isn't visible let's try this instead i do print and close that bracket there now if i run it Hopefully it will calculate it and print it. Yes, the remote interpreter got reinitialized and then it printed four and then that's it. Uh, is that it? Is the pass, what's the pass for? Can I do without it? I can do without it. One thing to notice here is that every time I make changes and of course once you get to know how these systems work you don't need to do it so often but every time I make changes I press the green arrow and I have a look what this does. That's because if this doesn't work according to plan or my understanding of what should happen doesn't correspond to the reality well it won't do any harm. Here, let's uh, actually do something, uh, do something silly here. So I'm going to open that bracket, print two plus two, but then not close it. First of all, I'm getting funny things here. This appears in red, like uh, when a spell checker indicates that something's wrong in Word. So it should be a clue, but I actually want to test what happens when it's badly written. So I'm going to press this and see what comes up and this is what comes up plenty of red well uh, okay so it says it's wrong here but we know that the problem is really here it says it's wrong here and it says um, invalid syntax line 16 right that's interesting the machine is able to tell us that there's an error but it tends to miss out where the error is in fact, I can tell you what goes on. The machine started to read this. It thought that there ought to be something to go with print. But it only found out that this isn't right when it got to this point because this bit that says if name equal main doesn't go with print. Anyway, we correct it and we'll know if the computer is signaling errors, we'll know to look where the system thinks the error is and possibly to look above as well oh and there's some nice bracket matching when i put my cursor near a bracket it puts that bracket in blue and it also highlights the corresponding bracket does that work with this one here oh yeah yeah and the, the opening bracket yeah yeah right so it's well, if you have to do two times two plus two times three uh, uh, to the power of where's power four and then um, uh, and some other you know interesting and complicated thing like this so here that corresponds to the end of print and that corresponds to the calculation I'm doing so matching brackets really helps when we have a formula that 
takes us a bit of work. Ooh, how much is that, by the way? Yeah, the machine does that very nicely. Uh, okay, is that it? Uh, I call the program Hello World. Therefore, nah, I'm going to print Hello World. Now, very important lesson here. If you do not write your one of the first couple of programs a hello world, your computer will be jinxed. You'll be haunted by the ghosts of Ada Lovelace and Grace Hopper forever. Therefore, your first programs must say things like hello world. Is that it? Oh, I'll do one more thing here. This is called module one, but it isn't. I'll call it hello world. What does that change? Absolutely nothing. But it's nice if our programs are tidy. Uh, in practice, what happens to me more often when I program is that my programs get very, very messy, They're very difficult to read and confusing and there's too much code. It's all in the wrong place, not in the wrong place, but things are not in the order that makes it the most the easiest to read even though it runs and then the problem doesn't work for some reason when the program stops working I have to spend time debugging working out what's wrong with it and at that moment I start to pay attention to little details like whether I've written enough explanation in comments that say what the program does here clean up clean up and uh, whether things are lined up correctly and variables have sensible names and all of those sorts of things But we'll talk more about debugging techniques and about various other keywords that can be used in in Python um, and continue this uh, con continue this series so that you can practice. Uh, I hope you have found this helpful. Uh, interesting things to do: take examples that you may have found online or on DataCamp and see if you can run them inside this uh, this system make the examples that you have found um, that you have found good into uh, say make the examples that you have found good into small programs name them save them Bye-bye.